Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on Clearinghouse. My name is Scott Kester. I have been training individuals and trucking firms about compliance for over 31 years. I have been with Registration LLC for the past eight years, and I can honestly say that I enjoy what I do. Please take note. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments, and I will answer them towards the end of this presentation, or you can always call the office Monday through Friday and ask for me or one of my colleagues. Okay, today we are going over today's session on the FMCSA Clearinghouse Updates. We've noticed there's been quite a bit of curiosity and a number of inquiries regarding the FMCSA Clearinghouse, its purpose, its operation, and who needs to comply. So let's dive right into our discussion, aiming to clarify these points and outline how Registration LLC can assist you throughout this process. We'll start with a foundational overview of the FMCSA Clearinghouse, the essentials like who is involved, what it encompasses, and the key timelines and locations. Then we'll delve into what these updates mean for employers, particularly our Registration LLC clients, and what changes you should anticipate moving forward. To begin with, what exactly is the FMCSA Clearinghouse? At its core, it is an online repository, providing FMCSA stakeholders instant access to data on driver's drug and alcohol infractions, negative return to duty test results, and the completion of follow-up testing programs. This system was mandated by a piece of congressional legislation known as MAP-21, which was enacted several years ago. According to this legislation, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, FMCSA, was tasked with creating and maintaining a clearinghouse to monitor and record drug and alcohol violation details. The objective was to equip employers and other stakeholders with effective tools for identifying drivers who are not qualified to undertake safety-sensitive roles. Currently, employers hiring FMCSA-regulated C. DL drivers need to contact the driver's former safety-sensitive regulated employers over the past three years to check for any drug and alcohol violations and confirm that the driver has completed any required return-to-duty processes. Nowadays, when a potential CDL driver is being considered for employment, the employer must reach out to their previous DOT-regulated employers, regardless of the agency be it PHMSA, the Coast Guard, or the FAA. This is to verify if there's any critical drug and alcohol violation information pertaining to that driver. However, the current method has its shortcomings. Prospective employees don't always report their previous employers or violations. If an applicant doesn't disclose they worked for an employer where a violation occurred, the current employer might be left in the dark there's a gap here that needs addressing. Additionally, former employers, when contacted, may sometimes fail to respond or outright refuse the request for information. Consequently, drivers who should not be on the road can end up employed and driving, endangering the employer and the public. The introduction of the clearinghouse affects various stakeholders within the industry. Employers of CDL drivers, the drivers themselves, medical review officers, MROs, substance abuse professionals, SAPs, state driver's license agencies, and consortium or third-party administrators like the registration LLC team. The roles and responsibilities of different stakeholders in this process are diverse, starting with employers. They are tasked with conducting pre-employment and annual inquiries on drivers, as well as reporting any specific driver violations as they arise. Drivers, on the other hand, must grant electronic consent for these pre-employment and comprehensive queries and have the ability to review the accuracy of the reports within the clearinghouse. Medical review officers, MROs, have the duty of reporting any specified driver violations. Substance abuse professionals, SAPs are responsible for documenting details of return to duty programs, 
Meanwhile, state driver's license agencies are mandated to perform queries before handling licensing transactions. The ultimate aim is for these state agencies to conduct these queries during the renewal, address change, or medical card update processes for commercial driver's licenses, CDLs. By 2025, employers will be obligated to verify with the clearinghouse to ensure that there are no outstanding drug and alcohol violations against drivers. Should a violation exist, and the driver has not completed the return to duty process, the transaction would be denied, rendering the driver ineligible to retain their CDL until the matter is resolved. Third party administrators, TPAs, may also report violations or make queries on behalf of employers. Understanding queries. Definition of a query. A query involves conducting an electronic search in the clearinghouse to ascertain whether any current or prospective employees are barred from performing safety-sensitive duties due to unresolved drug and alcohol program violations. This system supersedes the need for employers to reach out to former employers individually. From 2024 onwards, employers will report all relevant information to the clearinghouse, allowing a single query to retrieve comprehensive drug and alcohol violation data for a driver. Now the categories of queries. One, limited query, utilized for annual reviews of current drivers or for occasional checks. Requires the driver's consent, specifying the duration and frequency of checks. Consent can be documented electronically or on paper in the driver's qualification file. If no records are found, no further measures are necessary. If records are discovered, a full query must be initiated within 24 hours. If not, the driver must be removed from safety sensitive roles. Two, full query, necessary for pre-employment screenings, or if a limited query reveals records. Consent is tracked electronically via the clearinghouse. Drivers are notified through email to log in and provide consent. If a driver is not registered with the clearinghouse, a letter will be sent to their commercial driver's license address, which could take 10 to 14 days. Without the driver's consent, they are prohibited from engaging in safety sensitive functions, authorization and monitoring, limited query, authorization stored externally from the clearinghouse may be electronic or on paper. Next is comprehensive query, authorization administered by the clearinghouse. The driver receives the electronic notice. If a driver refuses or does not consent, they must be immediately removed from all safety sensitive duties. Employers are required to ensure that all queries are conducted promptly and in compliance with FMCSA standards a complete query will be executed on your behalf. Should there be any infractions or details regarding return to duty processes, these will be disclosed. If a driver has violated regulations and lacks a negative return to duty test result, they must be removed from safety sensitive roles and commence the return to duty procedure. If no violations exist, or if a violation is accompanied by a negative return to duty, test, no further action is needed. To clarify, pre-employment queries must be comprehensive, starting January 6, 2024. All new hires require a full query, which uncovers drug and alcohol violations directly to the prospective employer. Drivers need to provide electronic consent directly to the clearinghouse. Annual queries can be either limited or comprehensive performed yearly for each driver. A limited query only reveals if there's information to review, while it's up to the employer to maintain their own written or electronic records of authorization for these limited queries. Such authorization documentation is kept outside of the clearinghouse and may be reviewed during compliance checks or safety audits. An annual query 
can also be comprehensive if preferred. Should a limited query indicate that more information is available in the clearinghouse, or if you opt for a comprehensive query, it will proceed electronically. Note that the initial annual query for drivers employed before January 6, 2024 must be completed by January 5, 2025. You'll have till the end of the year for your first annual query of these drivers. Remember, electronic authorization for comprehensive queries is managed by the clearinghouse, not the employer or a CTPA. It is between the clearinghouse and the driver alone. Employers only need to preserve written authorization for limited queries. Drivers must give consent for a comprehensive pre-employment query before they can perform safety-sensitive duties for a new employer. Additionally, drivers are obligated to provide consent for full annual queries within 24 hours of receiving the request from the clearinghouse, or they will be removed from safety-sensitive functions. Beyond handling inquiries, employers also have a mandate to report specific violations within a strict time frame. You have three business days to notify the clearinghouse if you receive information about an alcohol test result of 0.04% or higher, a negative return to duty test outcome, refusal to take an alcohol or drug test, excluding those involving the MRO, a driver completing all follow-up tests as directed by an SAP, or actual knowledge violations. If this notification comes on a Friday, remember to exclude Saturday and Sunday from your calculation. Now, what constitutes actual knowledge? According to Part 382, this involves directly observing an employee using alcohol or drugs, or issuing a traffic citation for operating a commercial motor vehicle, CMV, under the influence. It also extends to situations where a driver admits to using controlled substances. Dealing with these admissions can be complex, so it's advisable to consult the FMCSA. Note that diesel won't assist in reporting instances where a driver self-admits to drug use due to the necessity of specific affidavits that must be submitted to the clearinghouse by the employer directly. While such cases are uncommon, employers must handle them independently. Drivers hold the responsibility of granting consent for limited queries. They must provide written general consent to motor carriers and respond to electronic consent requests from the clearinghouse. Drivers can also access their information in the clearinghouse to verify its accuracy. They may correct issues like name spelling, CDL, number inaccuracies, or incorrect dates, but cannot dispute the actual test results themselves. They cannot contest the MRO's positive determination or a collection site's decision on test refusal via the clearinghouse. MROs are tasked with reporting verified positive, adulterated, or substituted test results for controlled substances, not alcohol. They also report test refusals that need their judgment. The SAP documents the identification of the driver and the initial SAP assessment date, marking the beginning of the return to duty process, alongside the successful completion of treatment or education and eligibility for return to duty testing. Employers have no additional tasks regarding these reports, as MROs and SAPs create their own clearinghouse accounts independently. Employers don't need to appoint the MRO or SAP. Upon receiving relevant information, MROs and SAPs have a regulatory obligation to report it. For drivers, the SAP must be designated in the clearinghouse before they can submit a report, unlike the MRO, who doesn't need individual employer designation. TPAs, although not obligated, may report to the clearinghouse on behalf of employers and conduct driver queries for pre-employment and annual checks. Special regulations apply to owner-operators, who must appoint a TPA to manage their drug testing program and handle the necessary reporting to the clearinghouse. This can include conducting self-queries. 
while Registration LLC is not required to perform for owner-operators, we report on behalf of our owner-operator clients, assuming regulatory reporting duties. An owner-operator, as per FMCSA, is someone who serves dual roles as both employer and driver at different times. For instance, the proprietor of ABC Trucking, who registers the MCS 150 in their name and also drives under their CDL, fits this description. They must, accordingly, have a TPA for drug testing management and clearinghouse reporting. Looking ahead to 2025, employers should start preparing immediately. One critical step is registering with the clearinghouse because employers need to create their own accounts. TPAs cannot set up employer accounts. Each stakeholder, including TPAs, must register individually. Detailed registration instructions are available on the Clearinghouse's website, offering comprehensive guidance through the process for employers, drivers, MROs, and SAPs, complete with well-developed job aids for all parties involved. If an FMCSA employer intends to employ a third-party administrator, TPA, for Clearinghouse compliance, they must designate the TPA during the registration phase. It's crucial that Registration LLC knows the name registered with the FMCSA, which might differ from your Registration LLC account name. For instance, consider ABC Trucking. The FMCSA might recognize you as ABC Trucking, while Registration LLC refers to you as John Doe Trucking, the parent company. So, we must align ABC Trucking's reference with John Doe Trucking for accurate processing. You need to start purchasing query credits to meet the mandatory queries required from January 6, 2024. These credits, with no expiration and sold in various bundle sizes, still cost $1.25 each and can be bought in bulk. More details can be found at clearinghouse.fmcsa.gov slash query slash plan. It's important to prompt your drivers to register for an account before January 6, 2024, which should be incorporated into your hiring process for new recruits and encouraged among existing drivers. By preparing beforehand, you can avoid removing drivers from the road due to missing the critical 24-hour deadline for full queries. Registration should be done at the same site as employers, clearinghouse.fmcsa. Gov. When Registration LLC is designated as your TPA in the Clearinghouse, you must also notify Registration LLC to update your DieselWorks account. This involves modifying your account settings to ensure required tests report correctly under your client ID. Activating these settings ensures the necessary team accesses the work queue and submits required data to the Clearinghouse. However, simply designating Registration LLC as your TPA doesn't guarantee reporting. Explicit notification to Registration LLC is required to activate these settings. Regardless of whether you choose Registration LLC as your TPA, you must provide driver and company details to maintain accurate FMCSA random drug and alcohol testing programs. We'll delve deeper into this shortly. Starting January 6, 2024, full pre-employment queries can be ordered similar to other background checks with Registration LLC. If you already use our background services, you'll find it familiar. Currently, Registration LLC clients with FMCSA policies must provide the following details. Driver's CDL number and state of issuance driver's date of birth, company's DOT numbers for each FMCSA policy and location, confirmation of owner-operator status if applicable. The driver's CDL number and state code should be matched with the employee record instead of other identifiers. To summarize, 1. Register with the clearinghouse. 2. Designate a TPA if desired. 3. Purchase query plans. 4. Encourage driver registration making it part of your onboarding process. 
5. Notify Registration LLC of your TPA designation and provide necessary information. 6. Start performing queries and reporting violations from January 2024. 7. Complete forms using the CDL number and state code from January 6, 2024. Here's a flowchart for a high-level overview of your hiring and ongoing maintenance process. Employment applications, pre-employment, clearinghouse inquiry, pre-employment drug test. Feel free to conduct these steps in any sequence. Neither the regulations nor the process demands a specific order. You can choose to carry out the drug test first and then proceed to the clearinghouse query or vice versa. What matters is that both actions are completed before the driver begins any safety sensitive tasks. Avoid the scenario where a pre-employment drug test is done, the driver starts operating the vehicle and only afterward does the pre-employment clearinghouse query take place. The sequence must always be reversed. Until January 2024, you will continue to perform drug and alcohol checks with previous employers by directly contacting them. Post-January 2024, you will switch to obtaining driver's consent for annual checks. Compliance with all DQ file requirements remains a must, including keeping motor vehicle records, road test documents, and commercial driver's license copies. These should be kept either in the DQ file or another designated file. Regular monitoring of your driver qualification files and your drug and alcohol program is essential to meet both annual and ongoing requirements. Annual clearinghouse queries, both limited and full, need to be conducted, alongside managing other annual DQ needs such as motor vehicle records, report any drug and alcohol violations to the clearinghouse, or diesel will handle it if you're a client. In the event of a driver's termination, records must be retained for the correct period, which varies by record type. Ensure that all related information is appropriately maintained in the DQ file or another suitable file. Keep a close eye on your DQ files and your drug and alcohol program to remain compliant. It's critical to note that the Clearinghouse lacks an application programming interface, API, eliminating any options for automation. All tasks must be completed manually on the Clearinghouse website. You do have the option to perform batch queries by formatting them in a specific Excel TSV file. You can upload up to 100 drivers at a time into the clearinghouse, which will process each query. This is the extent of automation available, uploading data in an Excel format and submitting it. Currently, there's no capability to automate these tasks through a simple interface or by using a third-party service like Dieselworks or other CTPAs. These must be done manually with no announced plans for future automation due to certain security requirements mandated by the federal government. It's important to mention that diesel cannot function as your CTPA unless you are an active diesel client. To handle reports for you, we require an FMCSA compliant drug and alcohol policy. Without processing your drug tests, we can't generate reports on your behalf. For us to perform queries, you'd need to sign up for our background services and DQ service for tracking compliance. Come January, the transition to using CDL numbers might cause some industry-wide challenges, including potential roster duplication errors if records have been kept using social security numbers. Identifying clients in the clearinghouse can be cumbersome due to discrepancies between employer names as known to us and as listed with the FMCSA. For instance, we may know a business as John Doe Trucking, but it's registered with the FMCSA as ABC Trucking. Without other identifiers like DOT numbers or emails, we have to diligently cross-check to ensure accurate recognition. Query delays could occur due to drivers not giving consent, 
possibly because they are not registered with the clearinghouse or simply ignoring their emails. If drivers do not consent to a full query promptly, you'll have to pull them off the road. It's beneficial to inform drivers when you've requested a full query so they can promptly respond and avoid being sidelined. Query delays might also arise from insufficient query credits. Although Registration LLC can't order query bundles on your behalf, we can monitor your balance and alert you when credits are running low. The Clearinghouse will notify employers about low balances, though the specifics of these alerts haven't been clarified. Plan to collaborate closely with us in Registration LLC to ensure a smooth rollout. Preparation is key. We've been diligently preparing to support this transition. Although the Clearinghouse final rule appeared in 2016, operational details only emerged in early 2024. We've worked hard to stay updated and we'll continue working closely with you in 2025 to ensure everything proceeds smoothly. Please begin preparations now or please call 866-477-0707. Zero seven, or visit us at fmcsa.registration.com.